assalamu alaikum guys today we are going to talk about the intramembranous and the sutural type of bone formation in the last lecture we talked about the endochondral bone formation the endo endochondral bone formation as i mentioned in the last lecture occurs in the mid region of the long bones it occurs at the uh, articular surfaces of the mandible uh in this type of bone formation first a cartilage model develops within the mesenchyme of the bone and then that cartilage model is eventually replaced by bone and that is how you get the endochondral bone today we are going to talk about the intramembranous type of bone formation where the bone directly forms within the mesenchyme without the uh, formation of any prior cartilage model this type of bone formation occurs at multiple sites uh, for example within the maxilla within the body of the mandible uh, each bone of the cranial vault is made by intramembranous uh, type of bone formation the mid shaft of the long bones is made by the intramembranous uh, bone formation within this type of bone formation the bone develops as i said directly into the mesenchyme which is the soft connective tissue of the future bone region what happens within the mesenchyme sorry what happens within the mesenchyme is that there is an increase in the vascularity at the sites of these bones and the condensation of the mesenchyme of that site occurs as a result of the mesenchymal condensation the condensation basically occurs as a result of the a uh, proliferation of the mesenchymal cells and then they condense when the mesenchymal cells proliferate and condense and there is an increase in the vascularity of the mesenchyme as well that results in the differentiation of these mesenchymal cells directly into the osteoblasts once the cells differentiate into the osteoblast they begin to form the bone matrix which is the osteoid right after the osteoblasts secrete the osteoid or the bone matrix they at the same time start exhibiting alkaline phosphatase activity on their outer plasma membrane which is believed to initiate the mineralization of the osteoid so what this alkaline phosphatase activity is this basically is the budding of the matrix vesicles so this enzyme basically is believed to cleave inorganically bound phosphate and the liberated phosphate it likely to it most likely contributes to the initiation and progressive growth of the bone mineral crystals so what happens is that within the future intramembranous bony regions within the mesenchyme of the future intramembranous bony regions uh, vascularity increases and the mesenchymal cells proliferate and condense and as a result of this condensation and increase um vascularity the mesenchymal cells differentiate into the osteoblasts once we get the osteoblasts in these in in these regions agla kaam sara osteoblast ka they they start secreting the bone matrix and at the same time they start um preparing for the a uh, initiation of the mineralization of that bone matrix by exhibiting alkaline phosphatase activity on their plasma membrane and by budding of the matrix vesicles into the uh, osteoid at the mineralization front which initiates the mineralization of the osteoid and as a result we get the uh, initial um, immature uh, bone which is called the 
woven bone. The woven bone basically consists of the radiating spicules and trabeculae of bone which eventually fuse together to form thin bony plates. So first we have woven bone, as we know that the embryonic uh, immature bone hoti hai, woven bone kehte uh, we've talked about woven bone in detail why it is called woven and what are the properties of a woven bone so within the mesenchyme of the intramembranous uh, bone the vascularity increases the mesenchyme condenses and osteoblasts differentiate they start secreting the bone matrix and at the same time that bone matrix with the help of the matrix vesicles and alkaline phosphatase activity uh, starts mineralizing the mineralized bone that we get is immature embryonic bone and it is it consists of radiating spicules and trabeculae of bone which eventually fuse to form thin bony plates which is called the uh, woven bone. These early plates of the intramembranous bone which is the woven bone are structurally unsound and that is because within the woven bone the collagen fibril orientation is poor the mineralization is poor and there is a lot of connective tissue between the adjacent um, bony plates. So that is why these uh, thin bony plates of woven bone, the early plates are not very sound because they are not mature. They have uh, poor collagen fibril orientation, they have poor mineralization and they have a lot of soft connective tissue between the plates. And as we know that the woven bone is characterized by having collagen fibrils that are intertwined in many directions. There is a lot of uh, space between uh, the collagen fibrils which is called the uh, interfibrillar space and the collagen uh, this widely spaced collagen meshwork of the woven bone thus accommodates a lot of non-collagenous matrix proteins which makes the woven bone not as strong as an adult lamellar bone. So the first bone that forms as a result of the intramembranous ossification is obviously an embryonic immature bone which is the woven bone. Within the woven bone the collagen fibrils are oriented in random directions and they are intertwined uh, into a mesh of like a woven basket that is why we call it the woven bone and these fibril uh, between these uh, collagen fibril um, bundles there's a lot of space which is called the interfibrillar space within this space a lot of non-collagenous matrix proteins are accommodated and that is why the um, ratio of mineral to non-collagenous matrix proteins is hi comparatively high uh, within the woven bone the woven bone as we know rapidly turns over and it converts into the adult lamellar bone eventually. The early lamellar bone that develops from the woven bone has primary osteons that are deposited around the blood vessels. We know what osteons are. Osteons are basically the concentric lamellae of the bone around the Havosian canal. So within the early lamellar bone these primary osteons they are deposited around the blood vessel these primary osteons of the early lamellar bone are small and they're not very numerous and they're not very well demarcated or delineated you cannot very clearly tell about their boundary and they're not very numerous as uh, and as the amount of the lamellae or oh, sorry osteons often uh, of a mature lamellar bone as the this early lamellar bone matures, more and more osteons are formed at the periosteal surface of the bone and that results in the formation of tightly packed osteons that eventually have a higher percentage with, within the compact bone. So what happens is when the lamellar bone first develops from the woven bone the primary osteons are present they are deposited around the blood vessels but these osteons are not very 
uh, big like they are small and they are not very much they are not very numerous and they are not very well demarcated jaise jaise aur osteons deposit hote jate hain lamellar bone मेच्योर होती जाती है और ऑस्टियॉन्स डिपॉजिट होते जाते हैं तो ये ऑस्टियॉन्स द साइज ऑफ द एग्जिस्टिंग ऑस्टियॉन्स इंक्रीजेस द नंबर ऑफ ऑस्टियॉन इंक्रीजेस एंड एज अ रिजल्ट एक टाइटली पैक्ड ऑस्टियॉन्स की कम्युनिटी कॉम्पैक्ट बोन के अंदर डेवलप हो जाती है एंड एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ द मेच्योरेशन द कोलेजन फाइबर्स विद इन द लेमिलर बोन ऑल्सो बिकम फिकर एंड नाउ दे आर अरेंज इन ऑर्डर्ड शीट्स कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ अ लाइंड एंड क्लोजली पैक्ड फेबरल्स एंड देर इज नॉट अ लॉर ऑफ इंटरफेबरलर स्पेस बिटवीन दीज कोलेजन फेबरल्स सो वॉट हैपन्स इज द फर्स्ट साइन ऑफ द फॉर्म कन्वर्जन ऑफ woven bone into lamellar bone is the appearance of the primary osteons initially these osteons are not uh, numerous and they are not very well delineated or demarcated they are small this is a periosteal surface ke upar bone deposition hoti jati hai aur uh, lamellar bone mature karti jati hai more and more osteons keep on adding at the periosteal surface or wo, they become tightly packed within the compact bone and eventually we get a higher number of osteons within the compact bone and at the same time the collagen fiber fibers within the uh, lamellar bone they also become thicker and they are orderly arranged consisting of uh, aligned and closely packed fibrils and there's not a lot of um, space between these collagen uh, fibers so this is how the intramembranous bone basically is forming this figure here shows the intramembranous bone formation bone marrow and development of osteons uh, as you let me get a highlighter as you could clearly appreciate these osteons here center mein aapko ek blood vessel nazar aa rahi hai aur uske round jo hai wo aapko concentric lamellae nazar aa rahe hain this basically is the osteon system Be- within this osteon system you can appreciate the cells entrapped within the lacunae which are the osteocytes and here you can see in the middle of the bone you can appreciate the sinusoids of the blood which basically is the uh primitive bone matrix this region ultimately converts into the bone matrix aur uske around aapko ye chote chote spicules aur trabecular bone ke nazar aa rahe hain which will eventually from the trabecular bone kuch regions mein aapko bone resorption hoti hui bhi nazar aa rahi hogi jahan par aapko house shapes lacunae aur osteoclasts nazar aa rahe hain jaise ki ye ho gaya jaise ki ye ho gaya जैसे कि ये रीजन हो गया ठीक है सो दिस इज हाउ बेसिकली योर इंट्रा मेम्ब्रेनस बोन इज फॉर्मिंग सून आफ्टर अ सिंगल प्लेट ऑफ बोन हैज बिन फॉर्म्ड जो कि कैसे बनी है इंट्रा मेम्ब्रेनस ऑसिफिकेशन से इंट्रा मेम्ब्रेनस ऑसिफिकेशन कैसे हुई कि मीजन काइम के अंदर मीजन काइम की कनेक्टिव टिश्यू में directly blood vessel invasion hui mesenchymal condensation hui mesenchymal cells uh, osteoblasts mein convert hue unhone bone matrix secrete kiya bone matrix which is osteoid initially unmineralized hota hai phir wo khud hi osteoblasts apni mineralization ko control karte hain by the alkaline phosphatase activity and by the formation of the uh, matrix vesicles and as a result we get the uh, pecules and trabeculae of uh, initial bone which eventually fuse together to form a thin plate of bone this initial immature bone is called the woven bone the woven bone to- turns over rapidly wo immature hoti hai uske andar collagen fibril orientation poor hota hai poor mineralization hoti hai aur uh, uh, जो है क्या कहते हैं एंटोफेब्रल स्पेस बहुत वाइड होती है विच अकोमोडेट्स अलॉर ऑफ नॉन कोलाजनस मेट्रिक्स प्रोटीन्स एंड दिस वोवन बोन देन टर्न्स ओवर और कन्वर्ट्स इन टू अ लेमुलर बोन Initially, the lamellar early lamellar bone consists of primary osteons, which are not much, which are not very numerous, not very uh, well demarcated, and they are small. And as a result of continued bone growth 
at the per periosteal surface results in the addition of more and more osteons within the compact bone and eventually the compact bone consists of a tightly packed system of osteons which are very numerous well de delineated and uh, not very small these uh, this uh, mature lamellar bone uh, has collagen fibrils which are thicker very well uh, delineated and oriented uh, and there's not a lot of um, interfibrillar space between these collagen fibrils so this is how you get the uh, plate of the lamellar bone from the woven bone soon after the formation of this plate the bone becomes polarized and this polarization of bone basically is because of the establishment of the marrow how is the marrow established ye jo darmiyan mein aapko bone uh, blood sinusoids nazar aa rahe hain this region eventually becomes the uh, marrow and as the marrow establishes it starts expanding and that expansion results in the formation of an inner surface of the bone right outside the marrow and the outer surface of the bone which forms the periphery of the bone the inner surface is called the endosteal surface the outer surface is called the periosteal surface na shuru mein jab maine histology bone ki batayi thi to main detail mein endosteal aur periosteal surfaces explain kar chuki hu so i believe mujhe yahan pe dobara usko repeat karne ki zarurat nahi hai you very well know what endosteal and periosteal surface is so once the bone formation uh, uh, the plate of the lamellar bone has formed it becomes polarized by the establishment of the marrow and once the marrow establishes it starts expanding and that turns the inner surface of the bone into the endosteal surface where all of the resorption of the bone is occurring and the outer surface or the outer periphery of the bone turns into a periosteal uh, surface where uh, most of the new bone formation is occurring maine pehle bhi mention kiya tha ki endosteal surfaces of the bone ke upar mostly resorption ho rahi hoti hai aur periosteal surfaces ke upar mostly bone new bone formation ho rahi hoti hai this could change um, uh, in case of the uh, bones जो के ग्रो कर रही होती हैं एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ द ग्रोइंग स्ट्रक्चर्स जैसे कि ऑर्बिट्स नेजल कैविटी जब ग्रो कर रही होती है मैंडेबल जब ग्रो कर रहा होता है टू अकोमोडेट दिन इट इज इंक्रीजिंग इन लेंथ तो इस ग्रोथ के दौरान फोकल रीजन्स ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल एंड पेरियोस्ट्रियल सर्फिसज कुड अडोप्ट द पेरियोस्ट्रियल सर्फिस कुड बिकम फोकली वो बोन फॉर्मे फॉर्मेशन भी कर रही होती है एक जगह पे और कहीं पर वहाँ पर बोन रिजॉर्प्शन भी हो रही होती है डिपेंडिंग अपॉन इन विच डायरेक्शन द बोन इज ग्रोइंग बट जनरली द इंडोस्ट्रियल सर्फिस ऑफ द बोन टर्न इन टू द रिजॉर्बिंग सर्फिस एंड द पेरियोस्ट्रियल सर्फिस इनिशिएट्स द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द न्यू बोन जस्ट लाइक द कैल्सिफाइड कार्टिलेज मेट्रिक्स मेट्रिक्स वेजिकल्स within the bone are believed uh, to be implicated in the initiation of mineral deposition during the intramembranous bone formation jaise ki maine bataya tha shuru mein ke osteoblasts jab bone formation matrix secrete karte hain to wo sath hi matrix vesicles bhi secrete karna shuru kar dete hain jo ke uh, aapki intramembranous uh, jo newly uh, form, formed intramembranous bone hai uski uh, mineralization ko control kar rahe hote hain just like in any other bone just like the matrix vesicles controlling the mineralization of the osteoid of the intramembranous bone uh, a few non collagenous matrix proteins also have a role and they are the bone sialo protein and the osteopontin these two proteins basically are found uh, in the mineralization foci near the mineralization front and these proteins they accumulate within the spaces between the uh, collagen fibrils and they are associated with the cement lines around the uh, osteons now what a cement line is before talking about the cement lines let me tell you ke in non collagenous matrix proteins ka kya function hota hai within the um, at the mineralization front these proteins basically control the mineralization the bone sialo protein is believed to be a promoter of the uh, mineralization and the osteopontin is considered to be an inhibitor of the mineralization cement line 
regions ke andar ye aapko they associate these proteins are associated with the cement line now what a cement line is a cement line is basically a line which is visible under the microscope in the section of the bone and this line basically makes the boundary of an osteon every osteon it has a demarcation or a boundary in the form of a line which is visible under microscope and that line is called the cement line bahut important definition hai cement line ki definition aapko aani chahiye is cement line ke sath associated hoti hain non collagenous matrix proteins like the bone cell protein and the osteopontin jo ke mineralization ko regulate karti hain so this is all about the mineralization uh, and the formation of the uh intramembranous uh, bone or you could say all about the intramembranous ossification jo aapke mandible ki body mein hoti hai maxilla ke andar hoti hai amid shaft region of the long bones mein hoti hai skull ki bones mein hoti hai ye sari bones intramembranous ossification se develop karti hain this figure here is a histological section of the intramembranous uh, ossification within the developing uh, mandible jo first aapko this is your skin region then you could appreciate the connective tissue under the skin uske niche aapko outermost lining of the bone nazar aa rahi hai which is the periosteum the periosteum is continuous with the bone marrow the bone marrow consists uh, of the blood vessels and uh, iske upar hang kar rahe hote hain the trabeculae of the bone or the spicules of the bone resulting in the trabecular bone region and then you have the um then osteocytes within this bone matrix ye ye aapko jo entrapped cellular bodies nazar aa rahi hain these are basically your osteocytes the trabeculae are lined with uh, the bone forming cells ye sare trabeculae bony trabeculus ko line kar raha hai aapka ye bone forming cells line kar rahe hain the osteoblasts so you could appreciate the marrow cavity and the trabeculae of the bone hanging over the uh, marrow cavity the periosteum layer and the trabecular bone region yahan par kahin aapko unmineralized pink color ka matrix nazar aa raha hai kuch region mein ye wala this is your ऑस्टियोइड कुछ रीजन में बोन रिजॉर्बशन हो रही है जहां पर आपको मल्टी न्यूक्लेटेड सेल्स नजर आ रहे हैं विच आर दी ऑस्टियो क्लास्ट सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट दी इंट्रा मेम्ब्रेनस बोन नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट दी सूचरल बोन ग्रोथ विच इज अ वेरी स्मॉल टॉपिक दैट इज नॉट डिस्कस्ड इन डिटेल इन द बुक सूचरल बोन ग्रोथ सूचर्स के बारे में आपने एनाटमी में पढ़ा होगा सूचर्स बेसिकली प्ले अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन द ग्रोथ ऑफ द फेस एंड स्कल एंड दीज सूचर्स आर बेसिकली फाउंड वेरी एक्सक्लूसिवली इन द स्कल स्कल रीजन के अंदर न्यूमरस बोन्स आर ज्वाइंट टुगेदर बाय मेम्ब्रेनस कनेक्शंस and those membranous connections are called sutures these these membranous connections between the adjacent bones are basically fibrous joints that allow the movement between these adjacent bones and their basic function is to permit the uh growing organs of the face and the skull just like the brain for the skull and eyes for the face in growing organs ke liye ये सूचर्स स्कल और फेस की ग्रोथ को अकोमोडेट करते हैं जैसे जैसे ब्रेन का साइज ग्रो करता है स्कल का साइज भी ग्रो करता है एंड दैट ग्रोथ ऑफ द स्कल इज बिकॉज ऑफ द ग्रोथ एट द सूचर्स एंड सिमिलर इज द केस फॉर द फेस एंड द ग्रोइंग ऑर्गन ऑफ द फेस फॉर द सूचर्स द सूचर्स बेसिकली बिकॉज द सूचर्स आर प्रेजेंट बिटवीन द इंडिविजुअल बोन्स तो दो बोन्स के दरमियान में जो मेम्ब्रेनस कनेक्शन होता है उसको हम बेसिकली सूचर कहते हैं इट इज अ ज्वाइंट फाइबर ज्वाइंट बिटवीन टू बोन्स बेसिकली ईच ऑफ द बोन इन द सूचर इज कवर्ड बाय अ पेरियोस्टियम एंड दिस पेरियोस्टियम इन ईच ऑफ दीज बोन्स हैज 
two layers the outer layer is fibrous just like the periosteum has and the inner layer is cellular or you could say osteogenic sutures ke upar ye jo outer fibrous layer hoti hai ye do portions mein split kar jati hai फाइब्रस लेयर का जो आउटर पोर्शन होता है दैट रन अक्रॉस द गैप ऑफ द सूचर फ्रॉम वन बोन टू यूनाइट टू द अदर साइड पोर्शन ऑफ द अदर साइड ऑफ द बोन तो जो पेरियोस्टियम लेयर है सूचर के ऊपर वो बेसिकली उसकी जो आउटर लेयर है वो दो पार्ट्स में स्प्लिट हो जाती है उसमें से जो आउटर पार्ट होता है वो दोनों एडजस्टेंट बोन्स को कवर कर लेता है बोन ए एंड बोन बी दोनों को कवर कर लेता है so for example if i draw this here i think get another highlighter if this is your bone a and this is your bone b in dono ke darmiyan mein suture hai theek hai the periosteal covering of these two bones divides into two layers ek fibrous layer ki outer portion hota hai jo dono bones ko aapas mein unite kar raha hota hai aur jo uska niche wala portion hota hai second portion wo individually yun har bone ke upar ja raha hota hai theek hai so this outer portion of the fibrous layer basically runs across the gap of the suture to unite these two adjacent bones that are connected by the suture and the inner portion together with the next layer of the periosteum which is the which is called the osteogenic layer ye kya karta hai iske niche hoti hai osteogenic layer so the next layer along with the uh osteogenic layer of the periosteum runs down the suture along the surface of the uh bones involved in the joint so ye jo outer layer hai ye aapki it is the outer i am labeling it as o f it is the outer fibrous layer this next layer let me get another highlighter color did i get a new one no you okay so the next one is the if the inner fibrous layer that runs along the individual bone of the suture and then the innermost this is your osteogenic layer os se label kar rahi hu main isko theek hai so if you remember i said the periosteum layer basically has two layer two uh portions the outer fibrous layer and the inner cellular or the osteogenic layer jo outer fibrous hai wo further two portions mein split karti hai the outer and the inner the outer runs from one bone to the adjacent bone of the suture the inner fibrous layer runs over the bone of the suture along with the innermost uh layer of the periosteum which is the cellular layer to ye symmetry hoti hai aapke suture ke upar ye jo aapki osteogenic layer hai os se jisko maine label kiya hai this is called the cambium aur ye jo inner fibrous layer hai jisko maine if se label kiya hai this is called the capsule so you could say that the capsule and the cambium are covering or they are running over the individual bones forming the joint whereas the outer fibrous layer is connecting the two adjacent bones or ye inner fibrous layer which is the capsule or osteogenic layer which is the cambium in dono ke darmiyan mein loose cellular or vascular tissue present hota hai so this figure here clearly shows what i've just said this is your bone a let me get another color ye nazar nahi aa raha this is your bone a and this is your bone b aur in dono ke darmiyan mein ye suture hai theek hai this is the periosteum covering these two these two bones periosteum ki jo outermost layer hai wo run kar rahi hai across these two layers or uh, bones ye dekho ye this is the outer fibrous layer ye puri cross kar rahi hai dono bones ko jo periosteum ki 
इनर फाइब्रस लेयर है ये आपकी सूचर को कवर करिए ये यूँ आ जाएगी ठीक है और बिल्कुल यहीं यहाँ पर भी ऐसा ही होगा एडजस्टेंट बोन के साथ भी यही होगा ठीक है एंड देन यू हैव द इनर ऑस्टियोजेनिक लेयर हेयर कॉल्ड दी केम्बियम और इन दोनों के दरमियान में सारा वैस्कुलर टिश्यू है यहाँ पर इस फिगर में आपको केम्बियम और कैप्सुलर लेयर बहुत अच्छे से नजर आ रही है दिस इज द बोन एग्जैक्टली आउटसाइड द बोन इज द केम्बियम लेयर ये सारी ऑस्ट्रियोजेनिक लेयर है उसके बाहर सारी कैप्सुलर लेयर है साथ वाली बोन का भी ऐसा ही होगा और उसके दरमियान में वैस्कुलर टिश्यू होता है सो दिस इज हाउ द पेरीऑस्टियम इज लाइनिंग द टू एडजेंट बोन्स ऑफ द सूचर्स दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज वेन दीज टू बोन्स विच आर सेपरेटेड बाई सूचर्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल द बोन्स ऑफ द स्कल वेन दे ग्रो एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ द growing parts of the skull for example when the brain grows the skull bones are forced apart obviously skull is a close compartment when the brain grows it needs more space and it puts pressure on the skull bones as a result of the that pressure on the skull bones jo skull ki bones sutures ke sath connected hoti hain unke upar pressure aata hai aur unke sutural margins ke upar as a result of that stretch ya um यू कुड से प्रेशर बोन फॉर्मेशन होती है सूचरल मार्जिन पे और वो बोन फॉर्मेशन कैसी हो रही होती है ऑब्वियसली बोन फॉर्मेशन नीड्स बोन फॉर्मिंग सेल्स और वो बोन फॉर्मिंग सेल्स कहाँ से आ रहे होते हैं फ्रॉम द केम्बियम लेयर ऑफ द पेरीऑस्टियम द केम्बियम लेयर ऑफ द पेरीऑस्टियम एज आई सेड अर्लियर इज हैज एन ऑस्ट्रियोजेनिक पोटेंशियल इट इज एन ऑस्ट्रियोजेनिक लेयर और अ सेल्युलर लेयर सो दिस लेयर प्रोवाइड्स द सोर्स ऑफ न्यू सेल्स एंड एज अ रिजल्ट सूचरल मार्जिन के ऊपर बोन ग्रोथ होने शुरू हो जाती है बोन डिपोजिशन होने शुरू हो जाती है एंड दस द हिस्टोलॉजिकल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द सूचर परमिट्स अ स्ट्रॉन्ग टाई बिटवीन द बोन्स वाइल प्रोवाइडिंग अ साइट फॉर द न्यू बोन फॉर्मेशन द टू केम्बियन लेयर्स फ्रॉम द एडजेंट बोन फॉर एग्जाम्पल केम्बियन लेयर फॉर फ्रॉम बोन ए एंड द केम्बियन लेयर फ्रॉम बोन बी दे आर सेपरेटेड बाय अ रेलेटिवली इनर्ट मिडल लेयर सो दैट द ग्रोथ कुड अकर इंडिपेंडेंटली एट ईच मार्जिन एंड द सूचर बिटवीन दीज बोन्स स्टेज देयर अंटिल all of the bone growth has occurred until none of the bone growth has to occur and every suture of the skull has a different time for complete ossification after which it does not permit any new bone formation at the suture so this is all about the sutural growth sutural growth basically is happening at the margins of the suture what is a suture a suture is a connection or a fibrous joint between two adjacent bones for example the bones of the skull these bones uh, forming the fibrous joint or the suture are covered by the periosteum like every bone is but here in these bone the periosteum just like every other bone has two layers the outer layer is the fibrous and the inner layer of the periosteum is cellular and has osteogenic potential in the sutures the outer layer of the periosteum splits into further two layers the outer fibrous layer and the inner fibrous layer the outer fibrous layer runs from one side uh, of one bone of the suture and passes on to the adjacent bone of the suture connecting these two bones whereas the inner fibrous layer along with the osteogenic layer it forms a covering over the um uh, individual bone forming the suture the inner fibrous layer is called the capsule the cambian layer is uh, sorry the osteogenic layer or the cellular layer is called the cambian layer ab ye jo suture bones hain inke upar jab pressure padta hai as a result of growing growth of the organs for example in case of skull as a result of growth of the skull the skull bones are stretched apart and because they are connected to each other because of the sutures that stretch results in the bone formation at the sutural margins and the bone formation and for the bone formation the new bone cells are coming from the cambian layer of the suture the periosteum basically so this histological structure of the suture permits a strong union between uh, the adjacent suture bones while providing the site for new bone formation and 
this is it about the sutural bone formation today we have talked about the sutural bone formation and the intramembranous bone formation the third type of bone formation was the endochondral summarizing these three types of bone formation the endochondral bone formation occurs by the formation of a capsular model which is eventually converted into the mature bone this happens in the articular surfaces of the mandible and the long bones the intramembranous type of bone formation happens in the bones of the skull the maxilla the body of the mandible and in this type of bone formation the bone directly forms within the mesenchyme and the connective uh, or the connective tissue without any prior cartilage model formation the third which is the sutural type of bone formation it occurs at the sutural margins for example the margins of the the margins between the bones of the skull this is it about the bone formation this is a very important university question please look into this please study this from the book as well and if you have any questions please ask बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट यू क्यू है डिटेल के अंदर इसके ऊपर नोट लिखने के लिए आ जाता है दिस इज इट फॉर टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू सी यू गाइस फॉर एट द लाइव सेशन फॉर दिस लेक्चर व्हिच इज गोइंग टू बी टुमारो एट 11 ओ क्लॉक इनशाला अल्लाह हाफिज